children of the sun, you have vi been vibrationally attracted to Energy 9 Etheric. Uh, today, we're going to be speaking about the zodiacs for beginners, um, respectively going through the houses, the zodiacs, and the traits they represent, and then also relating it to time and the compass. Now, I know you may think like, a compass? What does a compass have to do with any of this? has everything to do with it. Uh, has to do with your navigation through this time and this reality that we that we live on. So without further ado, grab your pen, pencil, pad, whatever. Go get your vibes ready because we're getting ready to take off on an uh, a etheric journey. So let's do it. Now, what I want to introduce is uh, the spiral, like a snapshot of the spiral of time here on Earth. Uh, and the way we're going to do this is through uh, an unorthodox rotation that you guys are probably used to. We'll be going from east to west. So uh, I just, I'm just trying to plant these seeds so you can understand later uh, as we go through the notes. We're going to be going from, uh, from east to west, just like how the sun rises. Uh, and sets goes from the east to the west and uh we're also going to be going in orders of the houses and in order of the zodiacs um and then we're going to wrap it all up and relate it to time uh and navigation okay so hope y'all got y'all pins and stuff ready here we go we're finna take off now order to understand the order of divinity, right? We have to go from right to left. Because that is uh, the order of creation in your brain. When you create something, it starts from the right, it goes to the left. I know we've been taught to right from the left to right. I'm going to have to deprogram that from you today, okay? So, bear with me. I'm going to set it up through the quadrants first. Okay. As you see, we have four different quadrants. And uh, in each quadrant, there are three houses, three zodiacs, okay? Three uh, divine numbers, uh, three directional points. Here we go. And of course, it's not perfect. I don't want to see no shit in the comments. But here we go. Respectively, going from east to west. This will be first house. Okay? Um, Y'all can write this down just so you know. Uh, first house represents uh, you. It represents your body, your appearance, your style. Uh, it sits in the place where the sun rises. Um, in the zodiac, uh, your ascendant is usually associated with the first house, but that's just a side note. Um, but the zodiac is usually represented with the first house as Aries. Now, uh, when we think about the houses first, we're going to go through the houses before we get to the zodiac. When you think about the houses, the houses are just, uh, you know, your basic core principles and values um, when it comes to um, how you move and what energies you summon. Uh, and like I said, the first house is your, is your appearance, you know, your style, your body, you know, how your body looks, how the world sees you. Um, and it'll get deeper as we go to the zodiacs, okay? So just remember that. It's your body, your appearance, your style, how you are perceived by the world, how your light shines in the world, okay? Remember I said this is where the sun rises. Now, what the sun has to do with is your ego, uh, the illusion that we see. It creates light for us. 
Um, so basically, it's the light that shines, okay? Physically, that we can see with our eyes. Now, your light shines in so many other ways, but we're just talking about from a basic standpoint, okay? I don't want to confuse you guys. And here, we have the second house which represents wealth, assets, resources, um, and all the things we store up to navigate, right? And I like to say, uh, these are like movable possessions, right? This is what helps you get around in the world. Like I said, it's it's your wealthy resources, the things that help you navigate through um, everyday life, the things that you need to attain in order to do the things that you want to do physically. Like if you wanted to travel, you would need money or you would need a uh, family to travel to. Or um, these are just examples. It's not definitive. Or if you uh, needed a source of income and... Uh, you didn't want to work for anyone and you live uh, somewhere where there's a bunch of, I don't know, say a bunch of lilies grow or whatever. You can now get those lily seeds, grow those lily seeds. Uh, create with those lilies that come out of those seeds and you can begin to uh, create value and sell those things, right? So that's how... Uh, the second house represents your values, your wealth, your resources, your navigation system. All right? Remember that. And Zodiac represented by the second house is Taurus. Okay? Now, I'm going to move on to this third house. Okay? Now, third house. What does that usually represent? Uh, familiar, familiarity, uh, your habits, routines, comfort zone, you know, siblings. This is like close to you, like um, the things that are kind of stuck with you, you know, familiar things, uh, the things you can't, the things you do on a daily, your habits, your practices, you know, uh, your vices, you may be a smoker, you may be a drinker. This is all related to the third house. Um, and also, uh, it also has to do with communication and delivering messages, right? Um, so now we've gone through the first three houses. You know, the first house being your, your yourself, your body, your appearance, how the world views you, what... Uh, the light that you uh, allude to the world. And then you have the second house, which represents your wealth, your values, your resources, your navigation system. And then now we've made it to the third house, which represents familiarity. Like I said, siblings, things that are close to you, things that are habits. Uh, and in, in respect in this quadrant, uh, so far we've gone to what you look like, how you navigate and the habits you create. So just want y'all to think about that. We're still in the first uh, quadrant here, okay? What you look like, how you navigate, the habits you create, okay? Now, moving on. Oh, sorry. House represented, <laughs> I mean, uh, Zodiac represented by the third house is Gemini. So, and like I said, we'll come back to the Zodiacs. I'm just giving you the house run now. Okay. Now, fourth house, as we ascend to the next quadrant. Um, now, this is your, represents your, uh, like your roots, your grounding, um, your lineage, your ancestors, uh, the collective consciousness as a whole is your grounding. It's, it's your foundation, okay? 
Um, the zodiac represented by the fourth house would be Cancer. Um, now, when I say grounding in your roots and your lineage, you may think like, why didn't that start with the first house? It doesn't make sense. Well, we live in a solar system, right? So uh, the solar is the source in the system that we live in. So um, don't think of it as grounding like from the beginning of all time. Because the sun is definitely your, your, your soul source. But as a human here and how you uh, enter this realm and this world and this dimension, uh, you have to come through your, your ancestors. You have to come through your lineage. You have to come through. It's the grounding. This is why it's considered the grounding or your roots. Okay? Follow me. Stick with me now. Don't get lost. Don't get lost. We're going to come back around full circle. I promise y'all. And I hope y'all taking notes. Fifth house. So fourth house was cancer, if y'all didn't hear. Fifth house. Um, this represents your pleasures, romance, playtime, fun, uh, children, creation, uh, this this is this is basically, um, you know, where where that happiness kind of resides. You know, uh, creativity makes you happy. When you're happy, you like to create things. Um, children represents the house of children because um, this is children are playful. Children like to create. Children like to have fun. Children love pleasurable things, and it also uh, as adults, our pleasures kind of rely with sex too. So, and that also relates to creation and making children. So, you see the connection? All right. Um, Zodiac represented in the fifth house is Leo. Okay. Now, as we close out the quadrant. With the sixth house, sixth house. So fifth house, you know, we just left the pleasures, creativity, the fun. Now, sixth house, it's time to be responsible. Okay, this represents hard work, uh, your duties, uh, uh, the effort you put towards, your health, um, illness even. But it's the things that you do to maintain your 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 lifestyle, your body, your happiness. This is the things that maintain that. This is the disciplinary side of it. Okay, so um, and think of it like this as well. Um, whatever you do, whatever type of effort and energy you put forth is being put out into the universe now to protect you and to keep that energy to maintain that energy so i'm just i want you guys to think this way and open up your brains okay as we close out the six the second quadrant so now we've gone through uh oh and the the zodiac that represents the sixth house is uh uh virgo okay so as we close out the second quadrant we have gone through uh the pleasures we have gone through the hard work. We have gone through the roots and the grounding. Okay? So, going in order. Grounding. Roots. Ancestry. Okay? Um, pleasures. Creativity. Fun. Children. Love. Joy. Sixth house. Hard work. Uh, health. Illness. The trials and tribulations that you have to defeat with hard work and effort and uh, not giving up. It's, the, it's that vibration that you have inside you, that free will that continues to expand and get stronger and grow. Okay? So, <clears throat> we've gone through half of the houses, half of the circle. Okay? And just a review. We're going to go through it all real quick because I just like... To refresh your brain, first house, it's your appearance, your style, 
you know, how you're seen and viewed, right? Second house is your wealth, your resources, your navigation, right? Third house is your familiarity, your habits, uh, your siblings, um, daily routines, your comfort zone, okay? Uh, fourth house, grounding, ancestry, uh, your lineage, okay? Your foundation. Uh, fifth house, creativity, fun, joy, children. Sixth house, hard work, effort, health, illness, discipline, okay? Now, moving on to this third quadrant. Oh, also, too, if you guys want to go through the zodiacs, <laughs> just to keep up. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, uh, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, okay? Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Leo Virgo, all right? Now, notice how, like I said in the beginning, we went from east to west, right? So that would mean that uh, we're in the northern hemisphere. So that means these are all the things that are in the light, okay? Now, we're going to go to <laughs> the dark side of things, okay? So let's get it. Seventh house. Seventh house, it represents, you know, so see how it sits uh, opposite of this first house, right? Notice how it sits opposite of the first house. Now, this all relates because, remember that I said the second house, I mean, the first house represents you, yourself, how the world perceives you. And I told you that the Northern Hemisphere was the light. We have now just entered the dark, okay? So we're going from how the world sees you to what's going on within or the dark side of you or your opposition, okay? This is what the seventh house represents, guys. Your your adversaries, your competitors, your, your, your oppos opposition, um, the other version of you. This also represents partnerships and relationships, like how you attract people that um, that complement you or, uh, you know how to say opposites attract. They complement you or they supplement you. Likes attract, opposites attract. So, uh, seventh house, think of it as, um, kind of an outside force, kind of the opposite you. Okay, here we go. As we get deeper into the dark. We've now entered to the eighth house. Let me get that out of here. Okay, eighth house. What does this sit opposite of? Second house. Now, if you remember, second house is your wealth, your assets, your resources, it's your navigational system. So now as we go to the dark, the eighth house represents uh, the shadows, um, your inheritance, you know what I'm saying, money that isn't yours, wealth that, that you inherit. Um, it can also re uh, represent others' resources that you're able to use. Like if you uh, were to partner with someone and you didn't have the necessary resources to get the business flourishing, then that would represent the eighth house and how the universe can attract that to you. Notice how these are all kind of related to the uh, an opposite house on the opposite hemisphere, okay? So the seventh house related to the first, now the eighth and to the second, okay? Um, also, too, eighth house can also uh, represent uh, 
your mental health, right? Navigational system is the resources that you get and the things that you perceive to be valuable. And if you don't have those things um, and you have to uh, constantly use others, the too much of others. Now, I'm not saying it's uh, detrimental to use others, but if you have to consistently use others' resources, then um, it can have a damage to your mental health because you're not, you don't feel like you have value or you hold value, right? All right. Oh, yeah. Zodiac represents the seventh house is Libra. Zodiac that represents the eighth house is Scorpio. Okay. As we get deeper into the dark and we close out the third quadrant, we're going to speak about the ninth house. Ninth house being uh, Sagittarius, represented by Sagittarius. Let's just get that out of the way. Um, it represents the house of exploration, the house of divine order, philosophy, um, higher education, astrology, divinity, spirituality, okay? Now, remember that the third house was the things that we're familiar with, uh, the habits that we create, uh, the everyday uh, practices, um, the routines, the comfort zone, siblings. Um, now, it sits opposite of this ninth house, all right? And the synchronicity between um, familiarity and the habits and the habitual things um, and consistency and comfort zone in the third house. Um, it relates to the ninth house through spirituality, astrology, and divinity. Now, these are things that are familiar consistent, habitual in the astral realm, right? In the plane uh, that we don't see. Because we are on the dark side, remember. When the sun rises, where it sets, okay? So, that being said, um, If you create habits to enhance your spirituality, to enhance your divinity, learning astrology, um, and the reason why I'm making this connection to here is because it, these are like the most sacred divine numbers, you know, three, six, and nine, but we're talking about the ninth house and the third house and how... Uh, this relates. So, if you practice, you know, internally, right, your spirituality, divinity, gaining knowledge, um, exploring things on your own, not just going off of what people say. Yes, use what those people say and then relate it to your own experience, right? If that's the habits that we're creating, right? Instead of just the habits that we have on this physical plane, like these pleasurable habits and these, these habits that don't really have um, a high frequency, then it's going to be hard to attract the things from the universe that you want, right? This is why I say uh, the third house represents your your daily practices in your comfort zone because sometimes, and I'm not saying the comfort zone is always comfortable, it's just the zone. Sometimes you have to get outside <laughs> of that of that comfort, you know what I'm saying? You have to reach a different part of your comfort zone that's not as comfortable sometimes in order to uh, attract uh, and manifest the things you need from the stars and the universe, okay? So... Just moving on. 
Ninth house, Sagittarius. Okay, and as we close out the third quadrant, um, let me go through the, the uh, three houses here. Seventh house. It's your adversaries, it's the, the 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 other you, you know, the dark side of you, partnership, um, your competitors, okay? Um, eighth house uh, represents sh shadows, uh, inheritance, um, others' resources, your mental health, okay? Um, and the ninth house is your exploration, uh, divinity, spirituality, um, Philosophy, higher education, okay? Um, in the Zodiacs, respectively, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius. All right, y'all following? Closing out the third, moving on to the fourth, deeper into the dark. Now, as you see, we went from the lights and we have entered the dark. Now we're getting ready to head back to the light again, okay? Tenth house. Uh, this represents, um, and notice how the tenth house is opposite the fourth house, right? Now, what the 10th house represents is your career, your uh, your role in the public eye, uh, the highest potential that you could reach, your purpose, your calling, um, you know, your, your way, your practicality, okay? This is where um, you have reached... Um, that discipline where you've mastered that discipline and now you're just you're living off on a higher vibration of um, you know practicality you've mastered how the world sees you right now you're it's it's a role that you play in the public it's your purpose it's like it's not just how the world sees you but it's how you impact the world now okay and notice how the deeper we get into the dark the, the the deeper this this thing starts to get right okay and house represents I mean a zodiac that represents uh as represented by the tenth house would be Capricorn okay I hope y'all taking y'all notes uh moving on to the eleventh house this is gonna be You know, your consciousness, you know, your friends, uh, spiritual communities, uh, spirit guides, good fortune, the house of the angels, hopes and wishes, um, success. Um, it contains all the things that we need to support us and to support our work in the universe, right? So, that's how I said this is like... The spiritual house, the angelic house, is the house that guides you. It has everything that you need from the universe. It's community and consciousness and uh, camaraderie with uh, your friends, right? Now, opposite of the eleventh house is what? The fifth house. Who remembers what the fifth house represents, right? Fun, pleasures, creativity, uh uh, children, sex, uh, joys, pleasures, and it's a house full of um, just happiness, right? But it still coincides and relates. This is in the angelic realm and in the uh, spiritual realm. Now, it's the house of the angels, your spirit guides. It's, um, so if we can, if we can remember to, you know, love, be creative, enjoy the things that we have instead of complaining about the things that we don't have. Enjoy the things that you have um, and and ask the universe to give you the things 
you know, that you want. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that you don't already have, right? Be thankful for the things you have, and then you can now ask for the things that you don't have, right? Because this is the angelic realm. This is the spirit guide realm. This is where you, uh, you're vibing with the spiritual community. You know what I'm saying? You're getting connected now. You're being, uh, has everything that you need, like, for the universe. So, just to put it in simplistic form, um, creation and creating your own happiness is the key to receiving that help from the universe, from the angels, from your spirit guides, right? Moving on. To the final house as we close out the card with oh zodiac for the eleventh house is Aquarius. And as we ascend to the final house, and we return back to the light. Um Twelfth house represents limits, boundaries. Uh, it's where our sorrows lie. It's where we feel lost. Um, it's like uh, our hidden life, the life that we don't uh, project out to the universe. The the life that we kind of keep hidden, you know. Um, also represents uh, those negative voices that. Uh, like once you, and I believe the 12th house represents negative voices because once you are about to complete something, as soon as you are on the cusp of starting something, you know, um, it's always that voice that comes along and says, nah, you shouldn't do that. Or you, you start to lose confidence for some reason, right? So uh, you have your limits, your boundaries, sorrows, you know, the lows, your hidden self, the hidden life that you um, don't necessarily portray to the world. Negative voice, um, mystical experiences, you know, miracles, things that can't be uh, explained. It's the unseen, the unconsciousness, and your sensitivity, right? You can't really see your feelings. That makes sense, right? So, and the zodiac representing the 12th house will be Pisces, okay? So, moving on, moving on, moving on. And in closing. So, as we close out the fourth quadrant, remember, 10th uh, house, that's your career, your public life, I um, mean, your public role, your purpose. Uh, it's your, 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 uh, your higher calling. Um, the eleventh house will be the conscious, your conscious uh, spiritual community, spiritual guys, the angels, uh, you know, the things that you need um, that the universe provides for you. Okay, and then you have twelfth house and your limits, your boundaries, uh, that negative voice, that uh, the mystical unseen things, your unconscious. Okay, now. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, okay? 12th house is represented by Pisces. Um, now, as you've seen, as we've gone through the quadrants, okay, and we have completed the rotation of the houses, and we have gone from... <laughs> If you want to think of it this way, from 1 o'clock to 12 o'clock, okay? From 1 to 12, from sun up to sun down, and sun back up again. I uh, want you to take those notes that you got, skim through them real quick, and we get ready to hit these zodiacs, all right? And I'm getting ready to close this video out. It's not going to be long. Okay. Hey. 
Aries. Oh, the Aries is going to be the house of projection. It's the house of of starting. It's the house of doing something, being active, okay? It is the location of the sun when it's getting ready to rise in the northern hemisphere, right? So, like I said, if you remember, the first house is you, is how you're seen and perceived by the world. And Aries represents uh, projection, doing things, um, getting things done, okay? Moving on to the next, I'm gonna hit Aquarius. Do, 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 do. I mean, not Aquarius, I'm sorry, y'all. We're gonna move on to uh, Gemini, I mean, Taurus. Okay. Taurus is now, you know, Aries is like starting, getting things started, getting things done, being active, projecting. Taurus is slowing down and indulging <laughs> in the pleasures, uh, you know, staying grounded, being centered, you know, weathering the storms. Um, patience, okay? Now we move on to the third house. And Gemini. Do y'all see that? It doesn't matter. Y'all know what it is. Gemini. Okay. Now, I'm going to run through all of these. I'm not going to really explain the zodiacs. I just really wanted to just try to kind of get a placement of the houses and then try to show you where the zodiacs are and then. Show you their points and then relate it to a compass, okay? Because this is really a video about the houses, but um, I'll be doing videos uh, in a series with this whole lecture that ties everything that I'm about to say together. So I'm about to close this uh, lecture out, but um, I'm going to try to tie it in. Uh, we'll review the houses one more time before we go, but this video was mainly just so you can understand the houses, okay? Uh the Gemini, what is it, Cancer? The Cancer, you have Leo. After Leo, it is what's going on? Libra. After Libra, you have Virgo. After Virgo, you have Scorpio. After Scorpio. Sagittarius, uh, 10th house, it's Capricorn, 11th house, Aquarius, and 12th house, it's going to be Pisces. Okay. Now, as we close this video out, this is what I want to, uh, relate it to as far as time and, um, in directional, you know, uh, occurrence, right? So, if you look at this axis here, um, and you notice that the sun sets in the west and it rises in the east. Now, east on a compass represents Aquarius, usually, okay? It's information. It's where, you know, the sun is programming, you know, and uploading and uh, consistently 
giving us the information that it uploads and upgrades, okay? So, um, like it upgrades our DNA certain times of the year. Uh, don't believe me? Why do plants grow, right? Upgrades the Earth's DNA certain times of the year. We are also a part of that. So, I just want to <laughs> let that be known. So, look at it as if the compass was tilted, right? This is actually east. Okay. This will actually be east. Okay. Now, it sets in the west, right? And <clears throat> to better confirm this for me, uh, y'all can go research the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, right? The Sphinx. It's a Leo, it's a lion, it represents every, every year in Leo season, the sun sets at the tip of the Great Pyramid, right? At the top of it perfectly, it's aligned with it perfectly. Um, now, that would be <coughs> where the West is, okay? All right. Now, if we have west and east here, then this has to be north and Taurus. We have to have north and Taurus. Don't believe uh, Taurus is north. Look up in the sky um, during, during Leo season, right? Look up in the sky and you'll see that uh, at Taurus constellation, okay? South. South will be in Scorpio, okay? Um, now, if you notice these directional points, and this is what I was gonna get to in closing. Um, I'm gonna get to cardinal signs. And uh, cardinal signs, fixed signs, immutable signs, okay? So, I'm going to start with Aquarius because uh, that's where the sun rises from. So, this is actually a fixed air sign, okay? Aquarius is, is air. For those of you who don't know, okay? So that means automatically <clears throat> Pisces would have to be um, a mutable sign, right? Mutable, because this is the divine order of the zodiacs when it comes to, uh, I don't mean order from Aquarius on up, I mean from fixed to mutable to cardinal. Okay, so Aries would be a cardinal sign. Okay, so in your notes, on your wheel that you have, I want you to put fixed by Aquarius, mutable by Pisces, cardinal by Aries, okay? And if you want to continue on, it goes like this all the way back uh, to Capricorn, fixed, mutable, cardinal, okay, Taurus? Fixed, Gemini, mutable. I know Gemini is like, that makes sense. <laughs> and then uh, Cardinal. Right? So keep going. Leo is fixed. Libra is mutable. Those scales, that balance. Virgo, Cardinal. Okay, move on to Scorpio's fixed. Sag is mutable. Capricorn will be cardinal. Right? Whew. Now, guys. <laughs> that 
as we get deeper. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why. <laughs> I always miss these two up. I know y'all probably was killing me <laughs> in the video. Like, wait, I thought you said. No, my bad, y'all. Virgo. Libra. Okay. So Virgo is a mutable sign. Cancer. I mean, a, lot, a Libra is a cardinal sign. Makes sense because it's an earth sign. It can't be cardinal with Capricorn. See? I catch myself because I know I know this stuff. But anyway, um, so now you see we have cardinal fixed, mutable cardinal fixed, mutable cardinal fixed, mutable cardinal fixed. So all of the fixed, all of the fixed zodiac signs are the. Um, They represent the fixed points on the compass, right? North, south, east, west. So, um, think about that for a second. Powering off. And how that relates. Okay? And then you have, um, say you wanted to go, you had the cardinal points, right? You have cardinal points and you have mutable points. So now cardinal points and mutable points, they are the points... There are points that meet together on the uh, on orthodox directions of the compass. So northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, right? So that is what the cardinal and the mutable signs do. They meet. They like to say the cardinal points, but it's it really is where the cardinal and the mutable points meet. So as you see here, the cardinal and mutable point. Gemini and Cancer meet where? In the Northwest. So that'll be Northwest. And that does make sense, right? Because this is a fixed, Taurus is the fixed sign. So that's North, period. And then in order to get Northwest, okay, that's two different uh, fixed points. And you can't get to two different fixed points through one point. It has to be, it's two, what are the two that come together right there? That would be Gemini and Cancer. That would be Northwest. Okay, here you go. Northeast. Cardinal Immutable. Aries Pisces. That would be Northeast. All right. Then you have Southeast. Sagittarius and Capricorn. Cardinal Immutable. Southeast. East. Okay. Now let's move on to Southwest where the cardinal mutable points meet. All right. So I hope I didn't confuse y'all with uh, relating the zodiacs. And encompass together, but I wanted to put this all in one video overall. I went through the houses with y'all first because this was mainly a tutorial about the houses, but this is just to give you something to think about and go study on your own after watching this video. And um, hopefully, if you you continue to follow me, uh, you'll get to see how I break this down all the way through. Okay. Um, next video, we're gonna go through um, all the zodiacs, what they represent. Um, the divine order in them. We're going to relate them back to these cardinal points. Okay. Um, and when I go through the zodiacs, it will still connect us to all the 12 houses. So I'm not going to go through the 12 houses anymore. This is, this is the video for that. So, but it will connect. So just make sure you have your notes from the last video or from this video when we get to the next one. Um, and, uh, just to do a review, first house, okay? You remember what that was? It's the way you look, your appearance, your style, how you're viewed to the world. Second house represents your wealth, your values, your navigation system, 
north your navigation system <laughs> we'll get deeper into that though uh you have the third house represents your familiarities your habits um you know the things that you practice uh different routines comfort zone you know um fourth house it's your grounding it's your roots it's ancestry your lineage you know uh you know, your foundation, your consciousness, the collective consciousness. Fifth house, the house of pleasures, creativity, children, um, fun, you know, love. Um, sixth house, um, hard work, uh, discipline, effort, um, your health, um, and your illness, okay? Seventh house. The other side of you, your your adversaries, your competitors, your partnerships, okay? Eighth house, um, shadows, uh, the inheritance, others' resources, mental health, okay? Ninth house, your exploration, divine order, philosophy, higher education, astrology, spirituality, divinity. Um, tenth house. It represents your 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 public role, your career, your highest potential, purpose, calling. Um, 11th house represents, you know, um, consciousness, the friends, the spiritual, you know, community, your spirit guides, your angels, the things that the universe has for you. Now, notice how <laughs> it's on a in the east where the sun rises and that's where information comes from remember i told you it has everything that the universe needs for you it has for you that you need from the universe okay sun rises from the east um and then 12th house of course uh the limits the boundaries the sorrows the loss the hidden life that negative voice mystical experience the unseen unconsciousness sensitivity so that's just a review so you guys can clean up your notes. Um, and just so uh, we'll be ready for the next video. First house, Aries. Second house, Taurus. Third house, Gemini. Fourth house, Cancer. Fifth house, Leo. Sixth house, Virgo. Seventh house, Libra. Eighth house, Scorpio. Ninth house, Sag. Sagittarius. Tenth house, Cap Capricorn. Eleventh house, Aquarius. Twelfth house, Pisces. Okay? And... As far as the cardinal points, I mean the fixed points, you have East and Aquarius, North and Taurus, West and Leo, South and Scorpio, all right? And you have uh, the Northeast, cardinal and mutable points, Aries and Pisces. And you have the Northwest, cardinal and mutable points, Cancer and Gemini, and you have the Southwest uh, Cardinal Mutable Points, uh, Virgo and Libra, and then you have the Southeast Cardinal Mutable Points, Sagittarius and Capricorn, okay? So, we're going to get much deeper than this, but this is just for the beginner's guide. I hope I made it easy for y'all. Um, I'm going to make my next videos a little bit shorter. I know this one was kind of long, but uh, it's good information. It's information that you need. Um, thank y'all. For tuning in if you made it through this whole video um thank you for your time uh i'm sending you good energy i'm sending you good information i'm sending you good vibrations so your time was not wasted your energy was not wasted um, um i'm taking guys energy and i'm projecting my energy i'm absorbing you guys energy and i'm giving you my energy back so i'm returning my energy with your energy back and hopefully you guys can return my energy by taking this information, applying it, using it, researching it, and uh, hopefully it helps you in your journey. Uh, you have been vibrationally attracted to Energy 9 Etheric. We out of here.